Hello and welcome to the Despreneur podcast. My name is Thomas Lornavichis, I'm the founder of Despreneur and I'll be your host. In this show, I'll connect and talk with top designers, successful entrepreneurs and tech visionaries. The goal of this podcast is to unlock your potential and help you build a successful business and live with a purpose. Hello, hello, and today I'm broadcasting from the beautiful island of Bali, and today's guest is Rand Siegel, a designer and a co-founder of The New School, an online school that teaches you how to run your design freelance business like a pro. He's also a host of The Flux Show, where Rand shares his journey, struggles, and lessons he learned building his career as a designer and a business owner. And you might hear some some sounds of scooters outside because... uh, no matter how beautiful Bali is, they have a lot of scooters there, and uh, I'm very, very glad to have Ryan today on the show. So welcome to the show, Ryan. Yeah, hey Thomas, what's up? I'm good, I'm good, really enjoying the island. How are you? Yeah, it's good. I'm in Tel Aviv, Israel right now. It's also beautiful, also next to the beach. Less scooters, though. Awesome. It's very good to have you today, as I think many people really, like, including myself, are struggling with charging more and and really just like marketing themselves. Your book, Value for Money, and the pricing class are addressing the issue of getting paid. Why pricing is such a difficult subject? So um, I think it's, you know, I'm a designer by profession, and I think a lot of a lot of our fellow uh, designers go into this profession with kind of like feeling that they are, you know, a bit of artists in their heart and coming from a more uh, you know passionate place not from a not from a business perspective so when when it comes to the business side they're not that's not the reason they went into this profession and they're they mostly they just want to focus on doing their work the best they can and and so they're not really comfortable with uh, you know talking about money and negotiating and doing all the business side of it and I think it, in some emotional level, there is also this feeling that you kind of feel bad getting paid for something that you love to do so much, you know, so, uh, so a lot of people struggle there. And um, yeah, sometimes it's also the fear of, you know, losing a, losing a potential project that you really want to work on. There's a lot of, you know, emotional uh, stuff that goes into this uh, negotiation and talking about money when it comes to your work. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And especially the, the emotional part. I think for me, for me, it was probably the journey of really like boosting my self-confidence and then starting to appreciate my work. And as you say, not being afraid to charge for what I'm doing. So what was the journey for you? How did you learn to really like charge more and then price your, your services? So I was, um, I, I had a, um, I was kind of had a lot of experience both freelancing and working in uh, several, you know, full time positions from advertising, branding, and working with startups. And first of all, I think it's I was very lucky because I had, in a way, you can say mentors because I saw other people around me that were doing stuff that I could not have imagined possible. So seeing the the peop, other people actually do that, and it kind of makes you wonder and like, oh my God, you can really charge that much for this kind of work. It's not like, sometimes you don't even understand really the, um, the value of your work because again, we, we come from, or a lot of people I think come from the place of, of the craft, of loving, you know, design and typography and color and stuff like that. So sometimes they don't really fully comprehend, I know that for myself, I didn't really fully understand the business impact that I was doing on my client's uh, business. But once I, I, I saw the people around me, as I said, I was lucky to, to be working with some very talented people and kind of really understand that sometimes it, it, it's got nothing to do with uh, you know, the time that you're working on it. You can do something in one hour that will you know, help your startup raise one million dollars. So that's, it's got no relation to the amount of, uh, of time involved, but the impacts can be you know, enormous. So um, I, I, again, I was very lucky to see that around me and kind of like transform how I'm thinking about it. And it's actually the, the exact reason why we started the new school to share with other people that it's even possible. And recently with my uh, YouTube show Flux, where I'm trying to really show people behind the scene how it works. Just 
because I don't think I'm special and I don't think I'm the most talented person on earth or anything, but just show other people here, here's how I do it. And, and you can also do it. Of course you, get, you have to work hard and you have to deliver the value, but it's totally possible. And it's a lot, a lot in your mind and how you see things. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And, uh, what would be like the exact steps one needs to take to really start charging more? Because, uh, I think, it's a lot about like mind shift and, and really like surrounding yourself with, with the people who are doing this already, as you mentioned, with like being able to work with these uh, huge companies and talented people. But what are the exact small steps that, let's say, a new you know, aspiring designer or just like a junior designer who doesn't really know how to sell himself, what, what uh, he or, or, or she should do? So, so first of all, I think you, you have to cover the basics, the, the <laughs> the first are uh, you have to work with clients who are able to pay those prices because if you are working with, let's say, I don't know, a broke restaurant owner who doesn't barely have the money to, to pay a salary for himself, it's, it doesn't even matter how good you are or how confident you are. He just doesn't have the, the ability to pay you. But on the other hand, if you, uh, me, for example, I'm working with startups. So if you're working with a startup who just raised $3 million, then you know that they have the funds. It's just a matter of uh, seeing that this is the right investment for their money. So the, so the first step is to work with people who can actually pay you the money. That's, I think it's uh, a lot of people are mad at their clients for not uh, willing to pay them, but they don't recognize the fact that those specific clients can't actually, don't have the money to pay. So that is the first step. The second step, obviously, is that you do the work that is uh, valuable. It's a very important step, but I think a lot of people are doing a very good job, which uh, gets, to, gets us to the third point, which is actually understanding uh, really what your value is. And once you understand it, and once you, you recognize it, and you, uh, you learn how to help your clients understand it, which is what we talk about in the book and you know, go in depth about that, then you can really uh, communicate it to your client. Um, yeah, basically I think that's it. Of course, it's not, it's not as simple because y you have to be honest and say that a lot of people are, um, maybe they're not at, this, at, at, at the point where they think they might think I'm worth a lot of money and I'm not getting paid, but their work actually you know, doesn't worth that much. But I think a lot of people are doing great work and just undervaluing themselves. And it's a matter of, uh, it's not only confidence, confidence has to do with it, but it's also understanding you know, what, happens in the, what, what happens in the market and how much other people are being paid. Um, I think, for example, you have to understand when working, uh, for example, in the tech company, you have to understand how much developers are being paid. And I, I for a lot of years, I didn't make that uh, connection. You know, I thought, okay, developers are being paid a lot of money and designers are being paid less money. But why? That only means that the tech companies realize that the services of a professional are worth a lot of money. And you can position yourself against that, you know. There's no reason that uh, if a company pays a lot of money to a developer, they won't pay it to a designer. And that's, I think that's a big trend that's happening right now. So it's a lot about really understanding uh, what your possibilities are. Yeah, I absolutely agree, man. And I think developers are paid too much. <laughs> just saying as a designer. <laughs> Um, and you know what? I think it's just really, on honestly, I think it's a matter of uh, supply and demand. There are not many great developers. And, and actually, I see also a problem of not many, you know, super awesome designers because everybody is around me are looking for designers and are willing to pay a lot of money. And a lot of designers are just not um, good enough to, to take those opportunities. But I think there is many opportunities around. So what are... What are you think other skills that designers should learn or adopt uh, to really start marketing him himself and and differentiate to, to charge more? Because as you said, like there are so many really good jobs, but uh, not every designer is qualified for it. So, what are the next uh, next skills that should be uh, should become trendy? So, I'm not sure it's a matter of trendy. I'm I'm in the my, my philosophy is that you have to be 
a full stack designer. I mean, you're not only a designer. I also believe that a good designer can can be a good writer. He can help writing. He can he has to understand business, how the business that he's trying to help works. He has to understand sales and marketing because eventually most of what we do as designers is help to sell stuff. And most people are, you know, happy staying, you know, um, very talented designers and, and, you know, working on their design skills, you know, typography, color, you know, uh, the graphic uh, softwares. But they're not uh, taking the extra mile of really learning how to write better, how to sell better, learning, you know, the psychology behind what makes people buy and what makes people click. And, you know, understanding psychology is what really, if you want to be a user experience designer, you have to understand the psychology of, you know, of humans. So you have to really, that's my view. I know that, you know, other people want to be, you know, super professional at only one thing. But my view is that if you are, if you develop multi multi talents and interests and you know that's why i call it full stack then you can bring a much bigger value you know um because when i'm working with clients i'm also uh producing video for them i'm also writing uh you know marketing for them you know i'm running helping them run their facebook pages and i'm also uh writing the content on their website so i'm i'm helping with i'm not just doing the design uh, I help them with strategic thinking, so that makes it much, much more valuable, and um, and that's why they're willing to pay. Yeah, I have to admit that um, I'm a lazy ass, and it really took me some time to realize that you know these extra skills will will really make me more valuable. And I think just pricing and differentiate, like differentiating yourself, is uh, is a tough psychological game. So, what do you think are are the exercises to, to really push yourself into that hustle mode and start learning, you know, writing, understanding business and really investing in yourself? So the, the way I do it is uh, with side projects. I just do side projects that are fun for me, like personal projects, and I learn stuff along the way. For example, like four years ago, I started a blog in Hebrew, just in Israel, even though the, cr- the crowd is uh, uh, smaller, but I wrote every week for three, four years, and I my writing has improved, uh, you know, million times, uh, you know, and uh, and that's only one side effect. The other side effect is, is that I kind of, you know, gained a name for myself and got tons of clients and stuff like that. Another side project I did was that I, I developed an iPhone app myself. So uh, t- to do that, I took like some classes in development classes on Linda.com about how to develop for iOS, and I. Uh, and I developed an iPhone app. So I did the design, I did the development, I did the marketing. So now I have a much, much wider understanding of a project. And when I now work with other developers, I have a much more deep, deeper understanding about their life, their processes, how they think, and I can, and I can do a better job. Now, you know, the, the video, I started doing, you know, fun videos. When I go on vacation, I shoot and edit the video. And now it has become that I'm doing like commercials from, for my clients. So it, it, it all started from doing stuff for fun and then actually developed a skill that would, ended up being worth a lot of money. Yeah, that's the way to go, man. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's very inspiring. So actually, I wanted to, to thank you personally because uh, I, I watched a couple of your uh, vlogs on, on YouTube. And you just recently launched the show called Flux that you mentioned before. And uh, what's the story behind it? So you've been just like making these videos and decided to share it on YouTube or there was another reason? So um, I'm lately, I'm watching a lot of YouTube myself. I kind of think that it's the future of TV. Like TV is boring and YouTube has so much great content on it. And I've been with, I, I don't know if you know Casey Neistat. He's, do you know him? Yeah, he's he's really an amazing vlogger. He vlogs every day, and me and my wife are like watching his show every night. <laughs> you know, uh, I kind of became addicted, and I was really inspired by him. And I was thinking about, you know, why there's nobody doing that. I'd love to see a show like that about a designer, like how how a designer's life uh, looks like. And I was like searching, and I found on YouTube a lot of tutorials, a lot of technical stuff. But I didn't see like really behind the scenes of the work, behind the scene of, you know, both lifestyle, but 
you know, not not behind the scenes of of the Photoshop, but of the meetings, of of the thinking processes and stuff like that. So I couldn't find it. So I I tried to do it myself. In the the first couple of weeks, I was just doing it. You know one shot in my office uh, talking about a subject and then I, I kind of thought this is not a real vlog I really want to share the whole day how, how it looks like where I'm going where I'm eating and stuff like that because there is also something in these shows which is a bit like reality TV it kind of helps you connect to the person and see that he's you know oh he's just like me he likes this music and he likes to you know ride the bicycle and he likes to eat whatever hamburgers so uh, kind of helps you connect and tell your story in a more uh, personal way so I've been doing that now I've been uploading a video every weekday uh, for 11 weeks and yeah, I really, really enjoy it. And uh, there has become like a community of people, you know, in the comments, you get to know other people. And it's really, really, uh, it's fun. And it's, um, yeah, it's great. great. And, and I think that I have the chance to, as I said before, show other people. Maybe they're in, uh, you know, there's people watching from places like Vietnam and India and people who, who, who are not working in Silicon Valley or something like that and can have great mentors. You can show them that uh, it's possible. It's possible to work remotely. It's possible to, you know, uh, to hustle as a designer and show them how to do it. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the best part because you can touch so many different lives and different places in the world. And uh, so what are your goals with, with the show? Do you want to, to produce it daily? Do you want to reach a million people, a million subscribers? What's, what's your uh, main motivation? Truth is, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm doing it right now because I'm enjoying it. I don't know how long I can keep doing it. It's kind of, it's really tiring because I have to edit it every night. It takes a lot of energy, but right now I'm so pumped. So I, I really have this energy. Um, but and it, can I reach million subscribers? I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm thinking about that, but I don't know if like it's mainstream to see a, how a designer works. Uh, but maybe I don't know. I, I try not to think about it, and I just try to focus on the work, on trying to make good videos, trying to you know improve, make them more entertaining, make them more educating, and you know just focus on that. Um, I don't know how big it can be. I, I don't know. It's currently, it's also, it's not making money, but it's, uh, but it's fun. It's fun. It, and I think good, good things are going to happen, you know, already, by the way, they happened and I'm going and because, because of the vlog, I'm going next week to Copenhagen to do some videos there. So it's already, you know, good things are starting to happen. There you go. It's paying off. It's very good to hear. Um, I think it's, it's a brilliant, uh, actually opportunity to to really like brand yourself, you are your personal brand and then your business. And what would you say is is the best way to really brand yourself in content, in video content, audio content, and, and just, you know, blogging, putting words? Um, what is the best way? I think it's it depends on who you are and what, what you're confident in doing. You know, I, I started, you know, writing a blog and that worked really well for me uh, over the past three years and now I'm doing video because I found out that in a way it's both easier and more fun for me and, uh, and I think video is the future but I, and you are doing podcasts so I really think it depends on, on what you like, what you enjoy doing because these kind of, you can't really, if you only think about I'm doing this for marketing, you're not going to be able to, to hold on very long. You really have to do it for the long term. And then if, you, if you're not doing something that you love and you enjoy, then there's no way you're going to keep doing it because it's not, you're not going to see, uh, you know, results quick. It's very, it can be very frustrating, but, um, you know, my YouTube uh, channel growth is very, very slow, but I'm not. If I would only look at the numbers, I would be like giving up already. But I don't. I enjoy doing it. So, and I know that if I keep doing it in three years, it's going to be amazing. So you have to think long term and do something that you love. You know, that you have enough passion to sustain you for the long term. Yeah, absolutely agree. I think uh, just looking for the next three, four years, as you mentioned, video is going to probably even sooner replace TV. 
And uh, what do you think is the future of the design education? Is it videos? Is it YouTube or video classes as you have the pricing class? I, did, I don't know, but I'm super uh, fascinated by this. Um, I have a lot of issues with the, you know, traditional design education. I went to a design school for four years and I think, I, I don't think it was a waste of time, but I think it's very, very, uh, it's not the most productive use of your time and to, with today's technologies and, and stuff like that you can do. And I personally learned all the software using, you know, tutorials, online tutorials, lynda.com and stuff like that so I'm sure that you don't have to be a genius to understand that uh, technology is going to revol revolutionize uh, the design education but I think that the the, the thing that uh, is missing right now is the mentorship uh, stuff that you can really get from being next to people and that's what, what I think that that's what at least in my point of view vlogging can help you kind of replace the, the, the real mentor with maybe kind of a virtual friend, virtual mentor that you, you kind of feel like you hang around him. And, um, but yeah, I think definitely uh, somebody should, you know, completely create a new design education system. I sometimes think it's going to be me. Sometimes I think it's too big for me and I'm not sure I want to do that, but somebody's got to do it. I think, I think you're already doing it, so it's, it's a good start. And you mentioned the importance of, of, of mentors. Uh, could you name like books or courses or people uh, that influence you the most in your career? Um, so I, I was lucky enough to have like two really personal mentors, which one of them was my boss and one of them was a colleague that I worked with. Both were much more experienced than me. Books wise, um, I really liked uh, Design is a Job by Mike Montiero. I think everybody should read it. It's both funny and very uh, kind of motivating and educating. Um, it, it has a lot of uh, ideas in parallel with what we do in the new school, but I think it's a really good book. What other books have... Uh, when I was just getting into design, I was like more than... 10 15 years ago i bought a book called all access it's a really old book but it's kind of has the biographies of 30 or something successful designers i love reading biographies because it's kind of like uh you see how they did it <laughs> you, again you see that uh, it's possible uh to get from from zero to somewhere so i really like biographies um i don't know about other books yeah, but today I also think about uh, there's other people that I watch and follow, which I really think are, you know, at least for me are motivating. And uh, some of them around marketing are Gary Vaynerchuk, if you know him, uh, who has like really recently released a new book called Ask Gary V. It's really also a great book and it's really about, you know, entrepreneurship and marketing yourself and creating a personal brand. So that's really good. Um, again, I think what Casey is doing is amazing and, uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So what's next, uh, for Ran and what's next for the new school? So a uh, new school, we're cur currently working on a new product, which will be launched in a month or two, which uh, is called Prospero. It's a, it's a tool to help designers, uh, create proposals because as we, uh, it's part of what we're talking about, they have a hard time with the business size, they have hard time with understanding how much their worth is, uh, is valued and is worth. So we're gonna try to create a really simple tool that in a few clicks will almost fully write the proposal for them and they'll just have to customize it a little bit and help them understand how much the project is worth. That's one product that we're currently working on. Uh, we're also working on uh, a pricing class for developers this time. And um, that's it. I'm also working on a couple of clients' projects, which are interesting. I'm going to take my, uh, my YouTube channel to Facebook now because I, I kind of understand that Facebook are really trying to fight YouTube. So I guess Facebook video is going to be a big thing soon. I'm not sure what's happening on Snapchat. I think Snapchat is something that kind of we, because we're a bit older, then we kind of ignore it, but it's something's going on there. It's like over 100 million people there. It's probably in a, in a year or two, we're going to be there too. We're like the old people. 
like just like our grandparents are now on Facebook, we're gonna end up on Snapchat. So if you can be one of the first people there, maybe it's interesting. I just started using it like a couple of weeks ago, but I'm still not sure that I do it right. So uh, that's it. I don't know. The future is exciting. I think good stuff is gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, man. Like for me, Snapchat. It doesn't matter how hard I try to use it. I, I don't really. It doesn't really stick to me. And I try to push, you know, a couple of, of snaps every day, but then. I don't really promote it and then I would go for like weeks without any snaps, any updates and without e even opening the app. So, so I, I, I see your point and uh, I'm not sure if we're missing out on, on Snapchat, you know, instead of focusing on other social networks, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Thank you for sharing your future. The, the thing is that yeah, really you have to understand, you can't focus on everything. That's, I wish I could, but you can't. You have limited resources. So, uh, yeah, my efforts are now on uh, YouTube, but maybe I'm going to try to find it. This week I'm going to launch it on uh, like native Facebook video and see how that works. And uh, because I think it's a gamble, but um, Snapchat, really, I, I keep it on low profile. I can't really deep dive into it right now. So where, where people can uh, find you and your work online? So uh, you can uh, go to YouTube and uh, search Flux. That's F-L-U-X. Um, if you search for the new school, that's N-U-S-S-C-H-O-O-L.com. So that's, that's the new school. And um, you can Google me, Ron Segal with double L. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And you're probably gonna, oh, I don't know if you- Add you on yeah. Snapchat as well. On Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat is the worst because I wrote my name with a spelling mistake. So I don't even, I can't even remember my username. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I, I absolutely enjoyed talking to you and uh, keep up the great work. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks. Enjoy Bali. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. I mean, when you're coming around, maybe yeah, you'll, you'll nomad from Tel Aviv. It's super expensive, but also fun. Yeah, maybe I should just come up and, and you know, do a quick interview, meet some, some people, have a coffee or beer. We'll see. Keep in touch, man. Is there a big uh, nomad community in Bali? Yeah, actually, it's, I think, one of the biggest, let's say, trendy spots in Southeast Asia. So it's like Bali, I think, Chiang Mai, and then also like Bangkok and... Uh, there are many people in different places. I'm, I'm not very active in, in communities, but if I go to, to a place, I try to connect with someone. And here in Bali, it's like loads of loads of digital nomads. So it's a good place. Yeah, I, this is like, I'm always fantasizing about it, but since I'm with a wife and a little kid, I think it's a bit more complicated, but we're still gonna see how, how we can try this lifestyle. It's, it's perfectly doable. I, I met so many different families and I think it's, it's really just a matter of, of taking the first step and booking the ticket. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Thomas. All right, Ryan. Good talking to you. Thank you very much. There you have it. Thank you very much for joining me today in this episode. I hope you enjoyed and learned from it as much as I did. Thank you for today's guest. Please make sure to go to Despreneur, subscribe to the email list, get updates about the upcoming episodes and inspiring stories from design, technology, and entrepreneurship fields. Subscribe to the Despreneur podcast on the iTunes and please leave an honest review. It really helps me to understand how I can improve and serve you better. It also helps other people to discover this podcast. I appreciate your time and feedback. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. You can reach me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I love connecting with you. Thanks again. And bye until the next time.